it's chucking it down which is typical because I came out here for a bit of peace to do this video and you probably can't hear me because of the lovely sound of rain on a tar not so lovely today but anyway there it is I'll try my best uh, okay so firstly yes I do speak I just choose not to on my videos for whatever reason I've been persuaded to break my silence by a campaign called Leave No Trace and this was started by Dan of Camp Life Bushcraft do go and check him out if you haven't already I'll put a link down below Dan I think was worried like a lot of us about some recent news stories which are quite shocking about the mess left behind by people going out to enjoy the outdoors coupled with that I think we're all expecting a bit of an influx of people towards wild camping um, sort of a perfect storm really with the situation of lockdown ironically people have been out of the house and in nature for their hourly exercise more than perhaps they ever have and I think they've reconnected a lot of people have reconnected with nature and want to make more of it which people like Dan and me and all of us who make these sort of videos are all for we're all for spreading the word that's why we make these videos we want everybody to be able to enjoy the outdoors as we do some of us are very new to it ourselves I only started less than two years ago the summer holidays are a couple of weeks away and people can't go abroad so they're looking they're doing something a bit different and wild camping may be in their plans so the two things together more people wanting to wild camp but also more and more people seemingly showing a lack of respect for the beautiful places in these islands Dan got off his backside and decided to start this campaign to encourage people to spread the word on YouTube about how to enjoy out the outdoors responsibly particularly with a view to leaving no trace okay so his video is brilliant please check that out the initial video um, and really just to sum up the ethos of leave no trace it's exactly what it says you should be leaving a place where you have camped or enjoyed the outdoors with no evidence at all that you were there that's what we're striving towards the main three uh, sort of prongs of that if you like were covered really really well by Ash from Ash Outdoors he was in the next wave of videos he was tagged by Dan and he's tagged me thanks Ash which is why I'm doing this now um, Ash broke it down into three parts fires now I've got nothing to add to that um, particularly it was done brilliantly by Ash the fires bit personally I've never had an open fire in the two years or so that I've been wild camping I do like making a fire in a self-contained metal um, twig stove I suppose you'd call it I use a honey stove a lot of people use bush boxes etc I'm a bit paranoid about making a, an open fire uh, it's a bit overkill just for me I get enough warmth from sitting near to my honey stove in the winter personally and I feel that it just self-contains it I also put it on top of a soldering mat so that it doesn't even damage the ground too much underneath but in the summer like this I'm quite happy I've got a gas stove with me today just to you know boil a bit of water make a pot noodle later on he also covered the number two situation no need to dwell on that he nailed it jobs are good and excuse the pun the third one was to do with litter and that's really perhaps the the one of most concern I think in the short term um, now all I'd like to add on the point of view of litter is um, that maybe personally for me I've learned 
over many camps now to tidy up as I go along rather than leaving a load of mess to tidy up when I leave the next day. I've got quite good at maintaining a bit of tidiness around camp as I go along. I tend to, if I make a bit of rubbish, I tend to put it straight in a rubbish bag. Um, and I certainly don't go to bed leaving rubbish out outside the tent or just lying around. I did do that at first, but I soon learned that the weather, for instance, you know, if the wind picks up, it's amazing how that can blow things around that you wouldn't think could get blown around. Certainly cans and things like that. Also, if you're into stealth camping, because the legalities of wild camping in England and Wales are controversial. What I'm doing now isn't illegal because this is actually a permission camp. I've got permission from the landowner to be here. But a lot of what I do is technically illegal. I learnt this from Mike, the Black Country Woodsman, a very, very wise fellow. And he says that if you're stealth camping on someone's property and they happen to turn up and catch you, they're much less likely to chuck you off their land or get uppity if they can see that you're tidy. If they see a mess everywhere, it's going to set alarm bells going. And it really hit home to me that yes, of course it would. Now, if you're tidy and responsible, it's just going to make a better impression. So I've tried to practice that. The other upside of that is, of course, the next day when you wake up, a lot of the work is done. Now, waking up in the morning on a wild camp is the best part of a wild camp for a lot of people. It's a magical moment when you wake up and you realise you've done it, you've kicked in the middle of nowhere and survived. Kept dry, kept warm, hopefully. You know, you're looking forward to a coffee and a bit of bre brekkie and so on. You might have a lovely dawn, a lovely sunrise, the birds are tweeting brilliant but it is tinged with sadness as well because you know you've got to start packing up soon and getting off and if you've got less mess to clear up it just looks a bit it's a bit like waking up the next day after the party uh, you know it's horrible isn't it you're a bit hungover and sometimes us wild campers are a bit hungover because we like a drink some of us, I certainly do, when we're out camping. You're a bit hungover, you haven't had the best night's sleep perhaps, you maybe only had a few hours. And you've got all this mess everywhere. Um, yeah, it's always a bit more pleasant psychologically if things are tidy. Okay, so that's all I've got to add really to what Ash and Dan have already said. There is perhaps one other thing. Uh, that I'll touch upon. And it's perhaps the psychology of it. For me, Leave No Trace isn't just about mess and rubbish. Uh, it's also about any evidence at all of humans being in the wilderness. And this may be controversial, not everyone will agree with me here, but personally I think that includes if you build a shelter out of natural materials. So uh, you might make a, a shelter. I've never done it myself, I'm not that clever. But you may make a raised bed by sawing wood. You may make, you know, an actual shelter with bracken and moss and so on on the outside, like a teepee type structure out of deadfall and so on. Fantastic stuff, it's all bushcraft and I'm, I'm in admiration of it and I'd like to do it myself one day. I don't agree with leaving it there. When I go around woodlands and I see a bushcraft type camp, part of me thinks, oh nice, somebody's been enjoying the outdoors, somebody's into their bushcraft, great. The other half of me thinks, there's no way I'm camping here. Because I don't know how long that's been there. I don't know whether that's a regular camp of somebody that's going to come back. And it just feels like it's it's almost like putting a flag in it and, and stating ownership of it. It's also a bit like those annoying signs that you get outside of a shop back in 10 minutes. So they really wind me up those signs. I think Lee of uh, 
Burton Outdoors. I think you've done this in a rant, haven't you? And rightly so. They are a wind-up. Um, when you see a sign outside a shop saying closed back in 10 minutes, you don't know whether that was put there one minute ago, nine minutes ago, or 30 years ago. Um, and it throws you a bit of a wobbly. Well, I find that coming across evidence of camps uh, where you can't tell how long it's been there it does the same thing. It just throws me a wobbly and I don't, I'm don't. i not going to risk camping there. And that's a shame because sometimes there's some really great spots. On the other hand, what I absolutely love gives me the warm fuzzies is going to a place where you know people have camped. It's a popular spot for wild campers and it's pristine. You would never know that a human has ever been there. As a case in point, Axe Edge Moor in the Peak District. I've done a couple of videos there and I went there after seeing two or three other videos. Andrew Beavers and Dean Reed, for instance, have done some great videos there. And I went to the exact same spot that they went to. And it was pristine. There was no evidence that anybody had ever pitched a tent there ever. And it was lovely. And it made me do exactly the same thing. It made me leave it in exactly the same condition. And that's a lovely feeling that, that it's an illusion because that's quite a popular little spot for wild campers. But for that night, it was mine. It felt like mine. It felt like I was the first person and perhaps the last person to ever use it. And that's what it's all about. That's what we want to maintain. That's magical. And we can only do that if we leave no trace. And that really ju does mean leaving it so that the next person that comes along feels that they've just discovered it. Let's do them that favour. Let's leave no trace. I need to tag three more people to make videos because that's the way this thing works. I was tagged by Ash from Ash Outdoors. Brilliant videos. Go and check those out. He's an absolute favourite of mine. He does the lot. He does mountains, hammocks, uh, woodland, all sorts, coastal. Top lad. But the three I'm going to tag, first of all, I've already mentioned him, Mike, the Black Country Woodsman. Mike, I know this is a big ask because your videos are epic. You don't do many. They take you a long time. You put a lot of love into them. But even if you can just find five minutes to say a few words about this and spread the word, that would be fantastic. I've learned so much from you watching your videos about all this. Um, you immediately came to mind first. I'd also like to tag another very wise fella, which is Mark, the Y Explorer. Mark's always got a lot of interesting stuff to say and I'm dying to hear what he would say about this whole topic. And lastly, it's got to be the young upstart, local lad, Sam Outdoors. Sam, it's over to you, buddy. Sam's only down the road from me and uh, he's a great lad. We've yet to meet up for a wild camp, but it's on the cards. It's going to happen sooner or later. Till then, though, Sam, do me this favour. Make a little vid for me. Spread the word. OK, folks, right, well, that's me done. Might be the last time you hear me speak. You probably realise now why I don't talk on my videos, because I do go on a bit. It's all or nothing with me. But I'm now going to get the uh, jet boil on, get a pot noodle going, and uh, enjoy the rest of my evening. OK, thanks for listening.